In this video we're going to introduce the concept of a wave and an equation that describes linear wave motion in one dimension. So this is a kind of wave you're probably pretty familiar with. This is what a water wave looks like. These are the peaks and troughs of the wave. And this is known as a transverse wave because the wave moves horizontally but the waving motion of the particles in the water, for example, are up and down. The other kind of wave you're probably familiar with is the longitudinal wave. In this case, the particles, the medium of the wave, is oscillating, uh, in this case, horizontally, which is in the same direction as the motion of the wave. So you can track along with this bit of compression here. It's going horizontally in the same direction as the particle motion. So a wave is an oscillation or a disturbance in a continuous medium that travels. For example, we might have a function of space and time that is sine omega t minus kx, where omega and k are constants. And this would be a sinusoidal wave, like these two waves here are in fact sinusoidal. But this is not the only kind of wave, it's just an example of a wave. In the case that you do have a sinusoidal wave, then you can uh, say the disturbance is periodic in space and time, giving rise to this concept of wavelength lambda and period t. And as an exercise you can show that the wavelength lambda is given by 2 pi divided by k, this is k up here, and the period of the wave is 2 pi divided by omega, where omega is the angular frequency of the wave. Inside a wave, what is moving where? Let's look at a transverse wave again, and we'll track a particle in this wave, and we can see that this particle is moving directly up and down. It doesn't move forwards or backwards, it doesn't move in the direction of the wave horizontally, it's just going up and down the transverse direction of the wave motion. In the case of a longitudinal wave, again we can track some particles, this red line of particles here, and we can see it oscillates backwards and forwards, but on average it doesn't move. So what we can say is that the wave is an oscillation or disturbance in a continuous medium that travels, but the medium itself on average does not move. The disturbance moves, the wave moves, but the medium itself is not moving. So is this a wave? In this case we have a breaking water wave and we can definitely see there's a lot of water moving forwards here. In fact enough water that at some point the surfer also gets carried forward by the wave. Well this is a wave but it's not a linear wave. In this case we have a breaking water wave and the motion becomes non-linear. So the kinds of waves we're dealing with in this course are linear waves in which there is no mass or none of the medium that the wave is contained in, none of that medium is actually moving forward in the direction of the wave. There's transport of energy for sure, but there's no transport of matter or the medium itself. Let's look at some examples of waves. Water waves are transverse because the wave motion, the particles in the water are going up and down, but the direction of the wave propagation is parallel to the ground. Sound waves are longitudinal. The gas molecules bump into each other and that bumping motion is in the same direction as the wave propagation, so longitudinal. Seismic waves, they're more complicated. There are four main sorts. There are P waves, they're compression waves, so they are longitudinal. There are S waves that are transverse. There are love waves that are also transverse, but transverse in this direction well, the wave is moving in this direction. And then there are Rayleigh waves, which are a combination actually of P and S. So they are sort of a compression, so longitudinal component as well as a transverse component. So seismic waves are transverse and longitudinal. Light waves. Light waves are transverse. The electric and magnetic fields have directions that are perpendicular to the motion of the light. So light waves are transverse. Mexican waves, also transverse. You stand up and sit down, you're going up and down, the wave is moving around the stadium. Gravitational waves now. Gravitational waves is a new form of radiation that's been discovered by LIGO a couple of years ago now. These are really complicated. They're transverse, but they're not one-dimensional. They're known as a quadrupole wave, so we can't really think about them in the way that we're thinking about the waves at the moment. They still obey wave equations, but it's not this simple one-dimensional wave. You need to have more dimensions in your equations to understand how they work. So Google gravitational waves or quadrupole waves and you'll see how they work. De Broglie waves. So de Broglie waves are the matter waves in quantum mechanics. The things that describe 
the probability of something being in any given place. Now probability is a scalar, it doesn't have a direction, so unlike light, where you can talk about the electric and magnetic fields pointing perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation, we can't do that with a de Broglie wave. Nor, in fact, is there any physical thing moving, like there's no water moving, there's no gas moving, there's no earth moving, there's no matter moving. So a de Broglie wave is neither. It's not a distortion of space, and there's no direction of field. So a de Broglie wave is neither transverse nor longitudinal. It's uh, something else.